Okay. Let's see this. That hasn't crashed yet. I don't think it's going to. <laughs> Whoa, look at that rising there. Go. Go. Go, go, go. Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from j and Aerospace. This, this, is the most expensive kit that we make. We've only sold a few of these. Um, this is the hourglass too, and I'm recording this to kind of put a, a wrap on some various parts of this uh, um, detailing of these kits. Uh, so those of you that are curious can know, but also those of you who purchase it can, can get an idea for exactly what you're supposed to find in here when you open the box up. So first of all... What is, number one, explain what is the Hourglass 2? Okay, so the Hourglass 2 is my second iteration unlimited class uh, hand launch stick. So it's eligible, for, so it's designed for FAI F1 open indoor class. Um, and also open class hand launch stick for AMA competition, which is kind of uh, the, the primary way that, uh, that that type of thing is flown worldwide because most of them are in the U.S. Uh, I only know of two in the past uh, ten years that have been flown outside the U.S. I'm sure there are a couple of others, but um, uh, Zoltan Sukost of uh, Hungary and um, um, Kajimasa Kihara um, both of whom I've met uh, have, have pretty good size hand launch sticks. So this is a 380 square inch unlimited class model and this is a kit for that aircraft. Um, the model that I base this off of, the Hourglass 2, as it originally existed, uh, is actually out on our trailer right now. I've done 46 minutes with that up at Lakehurst. Hope's um, production version of the Hourglass 2 has done, uh, what, 38 something? up there, um, from around, I think, uh, 140, 150 feet, so it's capable of, the, the production airplane is capable of 40 minutes um, in Lakehurst uh, if you fly it to its limit. But, uh, so the box that you get the airplane in is, is your carry case for the aircraft. There are enough materials for two airplanes plus some spare parts. Um, to the question some people have asked, no, you can't fit two of them in this box, the two completed airplanes. It's just not, um, not feasible. Uh, if we made the box about that much longer and about that high, it is, we, have, we do have proven it is possible to fit two of them in a box that size, but that's, that's really transportation prohibitive. This is the biggest thing that you can get in a standard size automobile. So, inside here, uh, before I go into too deep into the parts inventory here, I want to point out there are side plates here. So on one of the side plates is the frame for covering your wing. We'll slide that back in there. And in the other side plate is the covering frame for your stab and rudder. You can put both of them in there. So this is basic, very basic instruction booklet. Um, so we've we've tried to detail some of the videos and documentation that have been produced on on these aircraft. So there's a three view with uh, basic dimensions, um, some of the basic uh, wood sizes and weights and whatnot from the one um, from from the production version. Uh, bear in mind. What's in here may vary from that because I'm trying to hand select wood. That's why you're paying $800 for a kit like this, is I'm hand selecting what I've got, what I'm able to find at the time that I that I can determine is suitable for the aircraft, uh, and that that does vary because not all wood is created equal. Um, and then here's a series of links to videos and other documents that have been produced on building these, because some of this I'm directing you off to Steve Brown's articles, uh, because frankly anything he's written is superior to anything I can do on the topic. Um, but the number of videos that we're producing on this and making available is growing as time goes on. So 
Um, I'm going to, in the next week or so, I'm probably going to put a page on our website that will be resources for building hand launch stick. And so you'll want to, regardless of whether you buy this kit, if you're interested in hand launch stick, refer to that for the most up to date information on, um, on this aircraft. So, a little bit of what's in here. Uh, there are forms in here for the wing and stab. Um, and so you've got the slots for your compression ribs uh, and, and whatnot. So these are, um, we've got videos currently online for how to use these, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on them. Uh, there is one more form, which is for your vertical stab with a couple of notches for what the uh, end length should be. Um, and what you actually are going to want to do is mark um, your outline for that, cut it oversized, put a crossbar across that, and then leave a little bit long to poke into your tail wound to mount those. Um, I'm going to move the strip wood aside here for the moment. So, we do not yet have the videos fully uploaded for this, uh, so hopefully by the time you're seeing this, they have been uploaded. But this is a wing bracing jig, and the way this works is you fit these carbon rods in here. And so as you can see, these form out your dihedral for your wing. So once you've covered the wing, um, once you've built the wing, covered the wing, and then lay, and, and you can uh, and, and cut it out, you can lay it on here. Um, your fuselage, your, your motor stick, before you put the bearings in, um, and refer to the, the thread I did on, flight, on the flight test forum uh, for a few photos of that. So I build out the, uh, the motor tube, I install the, the wing posts, and then before I've installed the bearing and rear hook, I slide that guy in underneath here with the, those posts sticking up. Set the wing on top, glue the center dihedral, glue those posts on, glue the bracing uh, cabane on top, and then I'm going to wire brace this whole wing. And then once you're done, you know, you've got this wing on here with all that bracing. All you have to do is slide each of these out like so. And then remove your um, motor, your motor tube underneath because it's going to have the uh, polyamide tubes to mount it in, and then your wing just lifts right off. Uh, that sounds complicated. Trust me, that's simple compared to some of the ways that uh, that this has been approached. Um, so and I will tell you, it's not as hard as it looks. Um, we'll definitely provide you with a video of how. He was showing me how to do it, so that way hopefully you guys can can watch that video and be able to replicate it. And I think we've got footage of me bracing at least one of the Hourglass 3 uh, wings that I built. I built two of them, yes. Um, so, so hopefully we'll be able to upload those as well so you can learn from some of my mistakes. Um, but anyway, uh, this is a propeller covering frame. So what you're going to do is you lay out your covering, put Vaseline around this, and lay it down like so, tilt it across, cut it out, and then you can stretch the, the covering across here. Uh, and we will be uploading a video in the near future of that. It's cur not currently there, but uh, we've got a video of Hope using not this exact frame, but the same design to cover um, propeller blades for her hourglass too. Um, in keeping with that, this is the 26, uh, uh, well, 13 inch radius by uh, 36 inch pitch propeller block for uh, the propeller. Um, there's a video of me using the larger one for the uh, Hourglass 3, so you're good to go on, on how to do all that. Um, Isaki tissue for the sole purpose of rolling motor sticks and stub booms and tail booms and all that jazz. So, 
me get this corralled for the trillionth time. Because every time I open this box up, um, yeah, that occurs. So we'll set that aside. This is one of the bonuses. It's not a bonus. This is just the nature of the beast. You get an entire roll of OS film. Um, you're going to use, to cover two airplanes, you're going to use most of that. Um, before I get into that, uh, this is your propeller blade form for the um, uh, 25 and a half inch prop, roughly. You can trim it a little high, a little low of that. Um, nichrome bracing wire. Some are going to ask, why don't we include the thin tungsten for your wing bracing? And the simple answer is this. If you're buying a kit for this, chances are you have not built one of these before, and you want the nichrome wire because it's a lot easier to use, like way easier to use, and you will get to watch Hope struggle with the tungsten wire um, when we upload that video. It is dirty words, dirty words to work yeah. with. Nichrome is challenging, but way less so. Um, and this is the aluminum form for your motor stick and stub. Um, and once you build out your stub, you can put the boron on while it's still on here after you've glued the seam. And then this is a tapered carbon tail boom that you're going to use to form your tail boom. And I recommend. So if you, if you look at these, these are the same um, end diameter roughly. And to get your, um, the, the tail boom is, the blanks are cut so that they'll wrap around somewhere around right here. So you don't start it at the end, you'll start it back here for wrapping the tail boom. So we'll set those aside. Actually, I'll set those on here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Of course, full-size plans. No notes on them, but full-size plans for reference. Um, and, of course, my email address is readily available to any of you that are building this thing, so you know how to get a hold of me. I'm not going to point... Well, if you can focus the camera right here, those are two uh, roughly 40, 50-inch lengths of boron already glued. So all you do is just gently uncoil those. I just wrap the one end through it. Um, to hold it there, um, but that's a lot of pre-glued boron ready to go. This is your little detailed parts package, whatever you want to call it. So there's a piece of thin polyamide tubing, there are uh, your wing posts, your stab posts, two sets of bearings and hooks, and one variable pitch propeller hub. Why do we not include, uh, and also two spare propeller shafts uh, for fixed pitch. Why do we not include two variable pitch propeller hubs? do that to force you to build a fixed pitch propeller because you have no business maidening this thing on a variable pitch propeller. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, now we're getting into the strip wood and whatnot. So uh, stab ribs are in here, tapered, pre-tapered ribs. I include several extras, same with wing spars. Uh, there's probably about, I don't know, two and a half sets. You'll make your cabane, uh, bracing cabane out of those as well. Um, I'm not going to open this up, but this is a full set or double set of um, wing ribs for this thing. And, uh, and stab ribs, by the way. Um, your uh, prop outlines and rudder, very long, thin strips. And let's see, this is where the, uh, okay, so this is strip wood for your uh, bracing triangles. Sorry, I can't remember what all this little thing is in here. I've spent a lot of time going through the inventory. Um, and I include, in this particular one, based on the wood that I had available that was best for it, uh, a pair of 020 inch thick motor sticks and some 015 uh, pre-cut stubs and booms, tail booms. Um, and pre-cut prop spars, pre-sized everything. Um, your webs for your motor sticks. Uh, propeller ribs, enough for two or three propellers or something like that. 
Uh, and then just some spare um, sheet balsa to use in case anything gets broken and for some reason you can't contact me to get replacements. Uh, so anyway, that's the whole host of inventory on this guy. So um, hopefully that explains to a few people who have been wondering why on earth anyone would pay this much money for a kit. Uh, well, some people who are into indoor um, really like the idea of having a kit like this. Um, is it expensive? Yes, it is. On the other hand, it takes me a tremendous amount of time to, to put one of these together, and the result um, that you on the, end, on the other end get is you get the most complete, most advanced kit ever produced for an indoor airplane. Um, so I'm sure somebody will come out and say, oh, so-and-so did X or Y or Z. To the, to the best that I can determine, though, uh, there's never been anything quite like this built, uh, produced by any other company. So we're kind of proud of it. Um, also proud of the fact that Hope will, hopefully later this year, um, do 40 minutes with one of these. And so that would be the first kit build airplane ever to exceed 40 minutes. Also, the women's unlimited endurance record, um, which she already holds to the best that I have been able to determine, is I think it's 3823 or something like that, uh, is the longest recorded flight uh, um, by a woman that I know of. Um, so, Bottom line is, you can make the big, crazy, long flights with this, and like I said, it's $800, and you have to do kind of a local pickup thing, because shipping this is, <laughs> have fun. Um, we are talking about releasing a short kit for this aircraft that'll be less expensive. Um, basically, you won't get the box, and you'll have to do pre assemble the jigs and whatnot yourself. Um, we have not discussed what the cost of that will be, and you'll know eventually. So anyway, I uh, hope that's uh, clarified for a lot of y'all what the, uh, sorry, I'm being OCD. I've just got to get it all put back in there. Because... And I know it says on our website, but how long does it normally, is it, would it take if somebody were to purchase one, say, tomorrow? Um, both, the, the, all of the ones of these that I've produced... For Hope, for Bud Lane, for uh, our current customer, whose name will remain anonymous unless he decides to change that. Um, every one of them's been two months plus. I mean, I, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, so we're trying to streamline that. This one was uh, two and a half months or something like that. It was, it was long, um, and that's because it was ordered right during the height of Science Olympiad season, and um, coordinating this with Science Olympiad stuff has been a pain in the neck. Uh, but yeah, so bear in mind, there's a, there's a pretty good lead time on these. Uh, we're trying to reduce it. With a short kit, it'll be considerably less. Um, we're working on doing internally produced sheet balsa for motor sticks and tail booms and whatnot. So hopefully that'll shorten things up. Is right now I'm having to make the booms and whatnot from my personal stash of balsa as I gradually source it and deplete it and try to find replacements. So that's one of the big issues. Um, so we're trying to fix that. Um, and no, you will not be able to produce in purchase indoor balsa from us for the time being because I'm not going to allow my contractor to be worked to death by that job. Uh, I don't I don't think he wants that job right now. Um, he will be allowed to make that decision as he gets further into it. Uh, but at the, at the moment I would discourage him from doing it because it's a massive undertaking. More massive than this. <laughs> Any other uh, stuff that you can think of, honey? I think that's it. Okay. Uh, two rambunctious kids causing trouble. Yeah, sorry. All the noise that you've heard. And I want to point out to all of you who have wandered uh, through all the ages, um, 
Yes, we do all this with two kids running around. Uh, Caleb actually does know how to um, pick up and handle indoor models. He's only destroyed two during his life, believe it or not. Tried to destroy a third by throwing a glider through, through Hope's F1D. I pieced it back together for her. She is eternally grateful. <laughs> Small payment back for all the grief she injures. Um, and Caleb survived the, uh, the encounter. <laughs> I'll just leave that at that. <laughs> um, anyway, questions, comments, hate mail, love mail, eh, whatever. Comment section below. Like and subscribe, all that jazz. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.